can we shift to censorship? Because this week we all read the letter of Mr. Mark Zuckerberg saying, I mean, we knew because we've seen court documents before. Uh, We've seen the internal email emails about them discussing it and going back and forth with the Biden administration. But he admitted out loud with his own letterhead that, yes, we've complied with the Biden administration and we did censor people and we did take people offline. Where does that leave us? Well, it just proves the evidence that we had already uncovered in the case Missouri v. Biden, one of the most important First Amendment suits in this nation's history, where we had uncovered and demonstrated a coercive relationship from the federal government with oligarchs and big tech social media to silence American voices in violation of our First Amendment right to free speech. And remember, the First Amendment covers not only your right to speak, but my right to hear from you. And so everyone who's ever been censored on big tech at the government's demand and everyone who was deprived information because of that censorship, all of those rights have been violated. Uh, And we put we got preliminary discovery to get a preliminary injunction, multiple depositions, 20,000 pages of documents or more. We had uncovered the vast censorship enterprise. We obtained the injunction. The uh, Supreme Court said, well, yeah, we agree that there was government censorship on big tech, but the government but the Supreme Court found that our evidence only led us through the years 2020 and 2021. Well, that's because the lawsuit has been pending at the Supreme Court for a year. And so they sent us back down to the trial court level where we have now commenced merits discovery. And just this week, the the trial court judge said, hey, state of Missouri, state of Louisiana, that's our partner in that lawsuit. We also have private plaintiffs. Uh, What discovery do you need to push this lawsuit forward? And so we're going to start firing off demands for information to continue to root out the vast censorship enterprise and prove that the government censorship is ongoing. We know it hasn't stopped. And the Zuckerberg letter just demonstrates that what we've been saying all all along is true. The government was demanding censorship and big tech was carrying it out in violation of our rights to free speech. Now, do you think that the Zuckerberg letter was more of a... uh an attempt to put, like you said, that they said it was in 2020 and 2021. My feeling, and and tell me if this is your feeling also, is that that letter was almost done to punctuate when, give an end date to when they were issuing the censorship. You know, it doesn't feel like a hero arc or an apology. It feels like, yeah, this is when we stop doing it. We promise, please don't go into discovery and do all this stuff because we stop. Leave us alone. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas, you know, I have I have friends pages that I click on on Instagram as of, you know, yesterday that it says, are you sure you want to see this post? Are you Mm. sure you want to follow this person simply because they, you know, are are posting patriotic things or political things or, you know, forbid posting a gun in their profile. Maybe they are involved in firearms. These people are still actively being censored. Um, There was a whole thing I heard where if you put an American flag in your bio, you were being censored. So this is ongoing, as I said, as of yesterday, and we had this letter. What do you make of it? Yeah, I think I think you're absolutely right. I think uh, the punctuation is the best uh, adjective to use there, that Mark Zuckerberg wants to get everybody off his back, wants to say, hey, my bad, we won't do it anymore. He's trying to head off the lawsuit so that they can keep censoring without any oversight. I think he also is hedging his bets in case uh, President Trump wins, which he should. Uh, you know, I think that uh, Zuckerberg is deeply concerned that President Trump's going to come into office and say, hey, you guys interfered with the 2020 election by suppressing mm-hmm the Hunter yeah. Biden laptop story and then tried to rig the 2024 election by censoring any voice that was speaking out in favor of the policy positions that put America first that Donald Trump is the leader of. And so I think that's uh, what Zuckerberg's doing. But let me say two things. No- number one, there's government censorship that violates the First Amendment, and that's bad and wrong. And we're going to use the case Missouri v. Biden and merits discovery to root out the vast censorship enterprise and build a wall of separation between tech and state to protect our First Amendment rights. But then there's corporate censorship, and that's going to go on regardless of of whether or not we can get the government out of the censorship game, because the big tech oligarchs also don't want your voices heard. I mean, how many times have you been shadow banned, deplatformed, de-emphasized, and you may not even know that's happening. So it's a much more clandestine and nefarious form of censorship than at any point in human history. When King George shut down a printing press, everyone knew he had done it, and he only silenced the written word. But when you're shadow banned, deplatformed, de-emphasized, you may, you and your listeners may not, your audience may not know that their rights have been violated, and their audience is being deprived of the spoken word, the written word, body language, visual imagery. So it's a much more robust form of communication that's being censored, and that's what makes it so dangerous. Yeah, the shadow banning thing really upsets me the most because people, it's like gaslighting people. 
they spin in circles and maybe they have some of the best ideas and they think their ideas are bad because no one's listening, their views are down or no one's engaging with it. It could be the best idea out there. And how much innovation are we suppressing and are we killing by shadow banning people? Because they give up. They think my voice doesn't matter. Yeah. Apparently people don't care. It must have not been good. No, it was fantastic. It's not your fault at all. Yeah, tyranny flourishes in the absence of free, fair and open debate. The whole point of the First Amendment, the whole point of the right to free speech is that we have this competition of ideas where the best ideas prevail. And when our viewpoints, our ideas, our voice is driven from public discourse, then we will slouch towards tyranny. Don't be mistaken. The big tech oligarchs want to fundamentally reshape our culture by silencing people like you and me. And that's why the content creators in the Second Amendment community, in the patriotic community, are such a target for censorship because uh, the left can't tolerate you guys having those channels and those voices. And that's why they're going to work so hard to suppress you. And it, it may not be uh, you know, banning you from the platform. It may be as simple as turning a dial to reduce your audience or reduce your reach. We've got to fight back against that, too. And I think state attorneys general have a role to play. I think uh, antitrust law is one avenue, uh, one line of approach. And I think also consumer protection law. I can't go to the grocery store and buy a product without seeing a warning label about what I, what's in the product I'm buying. And yet I'm using a medium of communication. And again, people are turning the dials and I don't know what risks or rewards are available based on their censorship because they won't explain the censorship algorithms to us. Right. I, I think we should do like a TikTok live and get you on and then we will talk about gun rights and we'll see how fast that live stream gets shut down. <laughs> I think that'd be really get, funny. Well, we even, you know? yeah, get off the ground. I mean, yeah, that's the we'll put, a, we'll put a timer in the corner and just have <laughs> a, a timer ticker in the corner on it. And see how fast they're like, you guys know who he just took down, right? <laughs> you know, well, the, the and maybe you'll is, see first ahead how bad it really is. They're so scared of freedom. Mm. I mean, that's, that's the, 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 the thing, like, they don't like freedom because they're scared of it. They want to control people because then they don't have to be afraid. And we celebrate freedom because we do it. We exercise our freedoms responsibly. And we understand that the, the freedom given to us by our founding fathers, protected by subsequent generations, are is timeless principles designed to uh, make our lives better and you know give us the full enjoyment of the lives God gave us. And so that's why it's so important to have these voices in these channels and to speak out. I can't wait. I can't wait to get canceled together. I'm going <laughs> to put that on my wall. I'm going to make a it's video funny about that that's it. What it's I'm come so to, excited. Though. You know, get canceled together at the same time. Maybe we'll get I know, blocked and banned together too. That'd be amazing. It's just, it's, it's crazy that, you know, they think that voters, constituents, American citizens are so ill informed. And they do think that they're stupid. I, I firmly believe that this administration you know, big tech oligarchs, they think that we're stupid because they think that they can put a Band-Aid on it, like this letter, for instance, you know, following up on Zuckerberg, of course, making those comments about the assassination attempt and somewhat, I think, leaning into trying to have a conservative media arc. You know, I think people see it. I don't think it's working. But it's fascinating that they think that they can pull the wool over our eyes that easily. And it's just a testament to how long and, and how well it's been working and how long they've been doing it. Yeah, that's right. I mean, they've been successful at it so far, and it's going to take shining the light of truth on it. And I, you know, one one element of the conversation we haven't covered yet, but it's really Section 230 of the Communications Decency mm -hmm. Act. And that's a federal law that was enacted in the 1990s that helped uh, grow the Internet. And it, it basically is used as both a sword and a shield by the big tech oligarchy. And it's allowed the big tech marketplace to, to grow in the way that it has, where power is concentrated in very few and consumers aren't being served, uh, the, the consumer's best interests aren't being met and the marketplace is not functioning uh, in, in, a, in a free and fair open way. And so when I talk about antitrust litigation, that's really what I'm referring to. The Section 230 of the CDA allows the, it, first of all, it prohibits, it, 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 it allows the big tech companies to exist without liability as publishers. So in other words, things that are said on their uh, platforms, they're not liable for in a traditional, uh, tr traditional sense under common law. However, it also empowers them explicitly to censor. 
So it's the shield that they're shielded from liability, but it's the sword and that they're empowered to censor voices. We we need to go into Section 230 of the CDA and repeal the sword provision and make it to where it, they're not allowed to censor. And I would say that, you know, in a traditional marketplace, there would be no open market impulses that would prevent censorship. You and I would say, well, we don't want to use that product because they're going to silence us or limit us. We're going to use this other product, which is better for our voice. But again, when you have that concentration of power in big tech, those normal right. impulses are not present. But people so know is that... places like TikTok censor because we deal with it all yeah. the time. But yet people still go back because their app is that good. And that's yeah. also the problem, right? <laughs> if people had said TikTok is censoring too much, we're just not going to use the app and people got away from it, then maybe there's more power and there's a little more leverage. People say they care, but do they really care? <laughs> I think we need to make people care. And we mm. do that by talk, having conversations like this. I mean, I think this is the first step right. in making people care. People need to understand why this stuff is important, what's going on, and we need to shine the light of truth on it. I am confident in the merits of our argument. We just need a forum in which to make the argument and we will prevail. Now, section um, the, two, the Section 230 thing you were talking about, is that related to, there's an executive order that President Trump passed at the end of his administration that worked to, I think, not overturn a piece of that. I'm going to get the details wrong, but what was the thing he passed about um, making, kind of what you said, making social media giants aggregators and publishers and that held them responsible? I'm forgetting the executive order number, but is that any way helpful or related to that? Yeah, I think President Trump is very well conscious of what's going on because he's been the victim of it. Uh, they want to silence his voice. They don't want him being the leader of a America first movement. They don't want him uh, protecting uh, the freedoms that we enjoy. And so they're going to find every way, shape and form to silence him. Again, they can't win the argument on the merits, so they have to uh, drive his voice from public discourse. He's been the victim of that. And so I think he, he and his, the, his team definitely see the need uh, to, to reshape the, the battlefield here in order to preserve freedom. Absolutely. I think Let's ultimately it requires congressional action. You know, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, uh, Section 230 of the CDA is a law that was enacted by Congress. And so it's going to take Congress going in and repealing the sword provision. And long term, I think that's the world we need to live in. But in the short term, I think that state yes. attorneys general have a role to play as well.